not air this. People should believe in you. <laughs> I can speak seven languages Mandarin, and Spanish. And I can kick your seven. ass. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful karate. <laughs> Love it. Amigos de película, soy Gaby Cam y estoy en la premiere en una locación secreta de Londres de Citadel, la nueva serie de Prime Video protagonizada por Richard Madden y Priyanka Chopra con Stanley Tucci y los directores son nada más y nada menos que los hermanos rusos con quienes voy a conversar para conocer todos los secretos detrás de esta increíble serie. Estaba en un tren, hubo una explosión. like to start with you. I love how uh, Mason is not your typical spy. He's mm -hmm. unlike Nadia, the vulnerable one, because mm -hmm. he has a memory loss. Mm -hmm. In which other ways would you say this character is nothing like this stereotype of the spy? Um, I think as the show goes on, you're going to get to know him more and you're going to get to realize that he's actually he's driven by love you know he's driven by this deep desire to be in love and to to be loved and that's not something we associate with the spy genre you know that's not the first thing that comes to our mind i had the, the gift of playing two characters so i could really dial in one which you know is surrounded by affection and good life and the other one which is surrounded by murder and violence mm -hmm. and, and and trauma and detachment and be able to play with the two of them together and see them combine and cross over and I think you know in the spy genre we're we're all a, we're all interested in that genre because we see people human beings at their most extreme the stakes being life or death and we got to kind of really play with that but on a very human one-on-one -on -one level and I think that's what makes it different. You know what was really unusual to me was it was conceptualized like that. I've usually had to fight for my characters to get them to have agency by the time we get to set. But the idea of the show was to have the female character with all her skill set um, to be able to help him get where he needed to get. And when they spoke to me about this four or five years ago when Jen suggested it, when she thought about it, that's how she pitched it. And I've had a 20-year career in you know, entertainment now and movies and television and it's still emotional to me when I have um, something at its inception that is created for an amazing epic female part and and by two guys, you know, um, working with Joe and Anthony too and David um, that wrote and conceptualized and worked with Nadia, like they sat with me, they took my thoughts, they, David spent hours with me just thinking about what and what kind of um, decisions she would make and it was so amazing to be in such a collaborative um, experience and where I was given agency as an actor, respect as an actor for what I brought to the table and it was a beautiful, beautiful experience to be able to help create her. Yeah. Stanley, I was very surprised because Bernard is really, he's charming, but at the same time, from the very beginning, hes he can seem like a cold-blooded spy. Yeah. How do you manage to portray a character like this that maybe doesn't really combine with your own ethics and your own morals as a person? Well, I played many immoral uh, people. <laughs> and, and, Sounds fun. And, uh, yeah. And, 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 really and, really and awful people, but that's just, that's what you do. Um, the thing is that no matter who the person is, they're always a person, right? So even when I played Adolf Eichmann many years ago, you have to find that sort of kernel of humanity in there, um, <clears throat> which through research you're, you're able to find. Uh, um, but I mean, a truly one of a, a monster of a person. But as they, you know, they always say that oh, these people were 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 monsters, and the, the, the sad part is they weren't monsters; they were people. Um, or Orlick, I think, has been trained like everybody else in this to to be to kill when he has to kill, and you know, be cold blooded when he has to be cold blooded. But I think that the key thing with him is that he's <clears throat> um, it's 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 for a good purpose. Um, I think he has over the, his life experienced the horror of Manticore and the damage that they've done. So he's at the point where he pulls no punches and the only thing that really matters is that Citadel um, is that Citadel win okay. um, and he you see the humanity in him too you see the the affection he has for Mason and you see you know for his family for 
But the, the only thing that really matters is that Manticore be destroyed. I could listen to Stanley Tucci say anything. I, I was just for thinking hours. that. <laughs> really? Your baritone voice is so hypnotizing. Yeah, I was yeah, like, it's you like, could be speaking tell another me more. language Thank at this you. point. <laughs> Thank you. I would I listen to thinking, everything. Thank you. I was just thinking the okay. same thing as he was saying. That's was like, so nice. Wow. Thank you. And you yeah. think that's why my wife falls asleep every time <laughs> I talk? <laughs> It's, oh. it's soothing, but it's not necessarily maybe, maybe, maybe. that soothing. I don't think it's sleep-inducing, let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it's just interesting. Let's say it like thank that. You, thank you. Quien eras, era un mito. Quien tú eras, era Citadel, una agencia de espías. Leal a ninguna nación. Richard, I have to tell you, when I was watching you doing all these fight scenes, I just want to go out and kick people's ass. <laughs> I'm not going to do it because they're going to kick mine. But um, I, I, I wanted to ask you, obviously, about these action scenes and what kind of details do you need to put attention to to make them re look real because to me they are real well that's the funny thing is like I would be a terrible fighter if I ever go into a bar fight because I'm trained to fight for camera so it looks really good but it's <laughs> really impractical it's terrible half the time it's slowed down half the time I'm doing like you're not hitting anyone anywhere near you're supposed to <laughs> so like I didn't learn any any skills from it but you know, one thing that we tried to do on this that was different to any other action things I'd seen is to try and really bring the drama into the fight sequences and then not just be high stakes, violence, life or death, but to say, how can we tell a story between these two characters in the middle of a train fight where 15 people have just been killed, another 15 are going to die, and you get to see these two characters connect and connect over their history and them not seeing each other and realizing mm -hmm. how these two are are two halves of the same thing in lots of ways. So that's what we try to do is to make it not just another action show, but have all this heart in the middle of it. Just to sum it up, I can, do, not, do not count on you to save my life if we're... <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. Oh, absolutely okay. not. All right. Oh, you can save it. No, 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 I'm, no, too, no, I'm no, too no, clumsy. Yes, no. We no. both are going to die. <laughs> gonna <laughs> what were you going to say, David? Sorry. No, no, no. What's so incredible to watch, as Richard was just saying, and it, it takes an incredible artist like him to really bring that to life, is he does 80 different things at once, right, in every frame of this, this, this series. So while he's, you know, saving the world and kicking ass, he's also furthering this incredible romantic story. He's playing two parts at the same time. It's like, I don't know how he spins 42 plates in the air at the same time, but he does. And I think that's sort of what, what leaps off the screen uh, in a series like that, is that energy. And um, I, let's talk about skills. Like you say you didn't really learn anything for your life, but what kind of a skill set does it take to portray Mason, but also to be the execu executive producer and the writer of a show like this? Oh, man. Um, skill set wise, <laughs> I have to get, it's good at pretending, you know, like I speak, say, I think seven languages during the course of the show and, you know, I can't speak seven languages. I can, How's your Spanish? <laughs> not great. And I can barely do English. Um, but we have to make it look as if we really can. So, you know, that's kind of a fake skill set of saying, okay, I can't understand or learn this, but I'm going to have to parrot these lines. I'm going to have to make it look like we do. Um, but, you know, sadly, I, I didn't get good with you know, actual skill set. It's all smoke and mirrors. Sounds great. Though. It's all a lie. Looks good. It's all Looks a really good. We should not air this. People should believe in you. <laughs> I can speak seven languages. Mandarin and Spanish. And, and, and I can kick your ass. Seven. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful karate. <laughs> I love it. And David, um, what kind of, a, of skills does it take to bring to life a show like this? Ooh, what a great question. It's really surrounding yourself with incredible artists, incredible producers, tacticians. Uh, really such an incredible team. So much about being a creator and executive producer is listening, it's collaborating, it's getting to work with the greats like Richard and really just being open to invention and revisions and changes and, and discovering things together. You know, I think we've created a really nice troupe uh, of artists in, in Citadel. And so for us, it's always best idea wins, you know, whomever it comes from. And, and it's just sort of that collaborative spirit. I have an idea for you. Please. Citadel in Mexico. Would be amazing. I think it would be would a be great incredible. location, right? Yes. Just that remember would be me awesome. when you do it. I will. I will. <laughs> That's right. awesome. Remember me? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, Mason's going to be in Mexico. Hundred percent. He's in two episodes. We got to have him there. <laughs> that would be great, right? right? Can I play like a reporter or something? I'm a horrible. One hundred percent. It was a part of one of the t things mentioned when we were starting to talk about the show like five years ago. The, a Mexican version, a Mexican installment. That would be really cool, though. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. Yeah. We, we are good people. Good people. I would love. I just yes. want to come to <laughs> yeah, Mexico. Right. So, good. I would, 
I would need Maybe to we'll do... just go on a vacation first. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can try well, that we'll, too. We'll go from there. Necesitas recordar el pasado. Para salvar el futuro. any different about yourself? Do you discover anything about yourself while playing characters like this? You often do, and, and I'm not a method actor in any way like that, but you live with these characters and it's a constant study of humanity, so you can only, you know, you've only got yourself as a mirror to reference these character decisions. That's mm -hmm. what I loved about this, was, was taking someone like Mason and seeing the decisions he make that appear very selfless, uh, selfish, sorry, and, and, and and not for the greater good and realizing where they come from. And that's just a very human thing, you know, no one's born bad. Um, things happen to people that make them become bad outward facing, but their motivation is not classic villain, you know, that we've seen in shows that we love to have seen in stories in the past. That's not what we're telling here. Everyone is a villain for a reason and everyone's got a hero in them because they think they're doing the right thing. Whether their actions are or not is, is, a, is a different question but they believe they're doing the right thing. So I think that that's a, a lovely thing for me. You know, that's one of the favorite things about my profession is I get to explore humanity in that way. Um, and and yeah, it crosses over to taking it home because you, you, you're you double questioning every decision you make. Um, but you know, there's not a lot of time at home when you should. Kind of show. <laughs> yeah, right. You're kind of like, I'm on set, I'm in bed, I'm on set, I'm in bed. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a fun life, though. Yeah, it's really good fun. I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to be living it. I never play myself. I wouldn't know what to do if I had to play myself. Like, I just, like, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so much easier to build someone else, because there's, like, seven billion people in this world. Just pick one, and you can pick traits, and you meet so many people, and you kind of color it in. You think about why someone's doing what, what their reasoning is, motivation is. But I, I don't even look for myself in the people that I play. I don't judge my characters. I think it's, they have to do what they have to do. We just kind of step into their shoes and breathe life into their truth. Um, yes, it can be a very immersive experience, but I think contrary to what a lot of people, or at least that's my process, um, is I don't think I... I don't think I put myself into my characters. I think I wear whoever I'm playing. So I'm just never there. Love it. I think you take elements of yourself. You take sure. every character. Yeah. You're right, you take elements that, of yourself and you sort of grow it and, yeah. and make that into a different person.